Consuelo, Madrid, Higuera. I was born, born in um, Santa Clara, New Mexico. For my, all my 12 years, my grandmother came from Mexico. My grandfather was a construction worker. And that's where they met in Zacatecas. And then they slowly came to, to New Mexico. Yeah, her, no. My grandmother I did. Her name was Vicenta, Vicenta Gomez. My grandfather, I never met him, but my, his, my grandmother I did. You should have met him. Very, very, very nice laughter, laughter all the time with his grandkids, starting from Sisi. Sisi down to as far as Michael and yeah. No, he was born in, uh, in, in uh, New Mexico. New Mexico became a, a state. So he was born in, uh, in with my, my grandmother. And he was born in, uh, no, yeah, it was territory from, from New Mexico, but it was in the state of New Mexico, so he was an American citizen. He wasn't a, a Mexi Mexican, because he was born there in, in Hanover. Hanover was the name of the town. Oh, my grandmother. I was with my grandmother from the day I was born <coughs> till I, till we left to California. Yeah. And so I knew her very well. She was a little work workaholic little little grandmother. She had chickens, she had sheep, she had uh, that she raised the chickens. They laid eggs, food. She was she had a place where she was used to grow grapes, so she had grapes, and she had like a garden all the time. She came from Zacatecas. My my father came from, uh, well, I tell you, from New Mexico, right. and my my mother came from Zacatecas, Mexico. Yeah, they met. My mother used to work at a. In New Mexico, my mother was there already in New Mexico when she was in her 20s. So she worked in a hospital, uh, veterans, like a veterans hospital for war soldiers that, would, that came there to be taken care of. So she worked there. And my father worked also there and he worked in the kitchen. So that's how they met. This, that was over here in California when he became a writer. He, he, he was blind since he was, mm, till he, Cece was the last grandchild that he saw. And after that, he, he lost completely his sight. So he learned, he taught himself how to type in Braille and that's how he learned his, uh, his how to write all these poems that he used to write. I have quite a few that, that I can show to anybody who wants to see them. That he wrote stories about himself, about where he was born. So those were in, are very interesting. Great, they were not, if they punished that it was for a very bad reason. <laughs> For a good reason, yeah. not just because you, oh, you be quiet, don't do this, not because of that, yeah. but for a reason. My mom used to work. My father was uh, in, worked in, that she worked in Fort Baird for the hospital, mm -hmm. and she would walk in rain or snow from where we lived in Central to Fort Baird, which was, was about, I don't know how many miles away every day so that I used to go and wait for her so she, when she would come home, you know, from, and that's what sticks out how, how she was such a, 
hard worker so young, you know, and she worked till the till she was 79 years old. My name is Hannibal with an H Higuera. I was named uh, after a Carthage general back in the antique uh, antiquity. He crossed the Alps on elephants to conquer the Roman armies. Well, my, uh, my grandfather was a uh, tightrope walker with Barnum and Bailey Circus. Always, always a neatly dressed man with a suit and a tie anywhere he went, no matter how old he was. He was a good sized man, yeah. At five foot eight, nine. He played an accordion uh, when they were living in Jerome, Arizona. And uh, he played, uh, well, he played the accordion and all the all the ladies liked his music, so they all gathered around him whenever he was in town to hear him play his accordion. He's a very quiet person. They're both from Arizona Indian tribes. Well, my father was uh, from an Apache tribe, and my mother was from a Yaqui tribe. Very fun-loving, good-natured joker. <laughs> My mom, she was, well, like in the, when I was born, the, uh, the women were all quiet. Mm -hmm. Homebodies took care of their children, their homes, and uh, that's about it. Uh, he was... He worked wherever he, wherever he could work. Mm -hmm. Jobs were, when I was born, were not plentiful. Hoover saw, saw to that. Well, that, they were loving, and uh, they cared for us, mm -hmm. and uh, gave us a good, good life. Mm -hmm. My favorite uncle was Uncle Willie. He was a fun-loving guy. He navigated the, the earth he navigated the earth on a on a boat. He was uh, he uh, oh he was everything. The uh, well he had a boat, uh, Chris Craft, thirty five footer. But uh, the boat that he navigated was for a very rich person. I don't recall his name. And uh, they they sailed around the world. I was born in San Pedro, California. On 6th and Gaffey, there sits a, uh, what the hell is it? It's not a McDonald's, it's a Jack in the Box, I think. And, uh, well, that's where I grew up. My house yeah. was, uh, was a duplex. And we had both, uh, we lived in both sides. Well, before Santa Clara, they changed the name to Santa Clara, the town used to name, be named central. We used to go to the same mass, I guess, it's, um, but I used to go every Sunday to mass and uh, at the same at the same time. So I never saw him there, but he said he was an altar boy, but I never saw him <laughs> until one time there were, was Easter Sunday and my friends, you know, we had girl friends and we would uh, go to church all together, girls, and, and that's when I met him. Coming out of church on an Easter Sunday, Easter morning. One look, one look at her and I was hooked. Till the present day. I saw her and I ran after her. <laughs> I did. <laughs> Remember? Sure you did. <laughs> you were with your mother. I was not with my mother. No? I was by myself, honey. No, I don't remember. You be by yourself. I remember your mother being with you. <laughs> Wonderful start of a of a nice, nice <laughs> experience all these years. Oh, oh, it was about three years. Then I joined the 
I joined the Army, volunteered for the Airborne during World War II. We joined the, uh, let's see, went to Japan, occupation uh, uh, forces, and was assigned to my parachute union. Field artillery, and uh, had nothing else to do but play ping pong. I was, I was the best ping pong player in the whole battalion. I got picked to go to Tokyo on a tournament. And after three, three games, I was out. So I had two weeks to roam around Yokohama and Tokyo. I wanted to go to Hiroshima, but it was off limits. So I came home, played ping pong. Training, training to fire our uh, howitzers. Uh, go out in the field and uh, uh, march, bivouac, and uh, uh, that's about it. Yeah, you used to write to me every day and I used to write back. No, when I got back from the Army, we, we got married almost uh, right away. Yeah, it, got, it was a very hot day. Everybody took off their shirts the men and the, the girls, all their hair was a mess because of the heat, the perspiration, you know, how it gets. And we didn't have enough what they have now, cold drinks and all that in 19, at that particular era. Oh, when we, when we were going to leave, we went uh, home to my house to back or to something. We were going to leave on our honeymoon. And all, everybody would follow us, all our friends and all that. So one of his friends told him, you're married to her now, go, go bring her, tell her you want to leave. And I would, because I didn't come out. <laughs> so, and that was a very, he was in the wedding. The guy, the guy that drove our wedding car ended up being the first uh, sheriff that opened up the Pico Rivera a, a sheriff station went on to become the mayor of uh, Eco Rivera. I was one of the first guys that got married in tails. After that, almost everybody that I saw got married was wearing tails. My mom, dad, my uh, aunts from my mother's side, my aunts from my dad's side. Oh, I remember, you know, I had an uncle, <laughs> an uncle that, um, he was <laughs> li he was from San Pedro, and he came to my wedding. Well, everybody that was invited came. They barely fitted in, in the house, because it was at a house, a house party, a house wedding. And uh, they were opening champagne, you know, a champagne bottle for, for the guests and all that. And nobody in the place could open a champagne bottle. We didn't know how. We nobody didn't drink champagne. <laughs> we drank beer. <laughs> so my uncle, my uncle, said, "Give me that bottle," and he opened it. He knew how to open the champagne. <laughs> so that was something. That's exciting. Yeah. Yeah, because we never, you know, had that. So that was one excitement of the year. And then we had. Uh, his mother, his mother bought us glasses for the champagne, beautiful glasses for the table. And the table was set, beautiful, and they they made um, what they what they have? What they made, uh, mole, what they call chicken, mole? Chicken. Chicken mole. Chicken never, never ending. And yeah. Never ended. Yeah. <laughs> so everybody would come and eat and eat and more. Eat and eat. The more they ate, the more there was. Yeah. Or so it seemed. The wedding cake that uh, his... My best man, my cousin. His, yeah, he brought, he was a cook. So something happened to the cake and he uh, he fixed it, the frosting. And, you know, when bringing it from San Pedro over here, I guess something happened to it. So he fixed it and made it just like new, yep. the wedding cake. Yeah. So that was another, another nice thing that happened to us that day, because we thought we were going to have a flat, 
a flat cake. <laughs> yeah. So, so that was nice, you know. I had a lot of relatives from all over that came, came to the wedding. And we went to a place called Rosarita, mm -hmm. Rosarita. And I think that that was the day that there was no lights. Remember we didn't? Yeah, the... The, uh... the lights went off on us and it was dark, dark out there in the ocean, near the ocean. Now that was an experience. Yeah, the uh, thermal, what is it? The generator that they had in town there went, went out, left everybody with... In the dark. Pitch black. Yeah. So, the closer we got together. <laughs> We had a, his mother was waiting for, he, she had apartments, like two other apartments there, where Ricardo Street, where they lived, where he lived. And we were waiting for one of those. So meanwhile, she gave us a room, a room for us to stay at, at their house. To sleep at? Yeah. So that's where we stayed there when we first got married with his mother until she got us a, one of those apartments that she had, and then we moved in there. Yeah, we lived there for 10 years till the city condemned their property, eminent domain, so that, uh, what is it, Nordstrom or somebody like that could, could take over. There's a big shopping center where our home was. Well, it was a few miles away from the beach. We went to the beach twice. We lived in Toronto Beach 10 years. Went to the beach twice. Once when we moved in, and once when we moved out. So we, we made a choice to get a house with all the facilities for all my children. So. It was hard at first because they were you know, you didn't know what to do with them when they got sick, and it's hard. You have to, you know, find out what's, what they're sick, rush them to the doctor, or, and then we, it was far from here to go to my, my doctor, so, but, but you, man, we managed. We managed taking care of all of them. Everybody went to go see her. Everybody was in dressed up like, it was, well, she was, you know, the first child that we had, so everybody was all dressed up, suit and tie, even your tata, everybody, my father, his father, his mother, all of our parents were there. There was Cece, Cecilia, and after that was Lindy, Erlinda. And after Erlinda was uh, Diana. After Diana was uh, David, the only son. There were three girls and David. Melissa, Teresa, Maria, and David. So he was, <laughs> David was right in the middle of six girls, yeah. She, she, she was, she was very, well, she's one of my thumb suckers. That was used to, when they would something suck their little thumb, they were, they were quiet little girls. So she was one of the quiet ones. And Terry was another thumb sucker. Was not, she was, she was just like my other kids. They all, they all shared everything together. The only thing Melissa was different than that she, she liked uh, maybe books or other kind of toys. She didn't like Barbie dolls. Like a couple of them liked Barbie dolls. She, she didn't, she liked either puzzles or other, other kind of toys. Not, not really Barbie dolls. They're the ones who liked the Barbie dolls. And Diana, them three liked Barbie dolls. Yeah, she used to, she used to like to do the uh, we had a swing for them. Swing. She used to like to hang on those. Oh, she could make three tricks. She'd sit, get herself upside down, her head at the bottom, and their feet up there, and hanging from the, <laughs> from the. Yeah, she used to like to, like exercise toys. 
I mean, exercise, all that. All my kids were happy and jovial. They had everything that they needed, wanted. I remember one time I gave uh, one Christmas, I asked uh, Cece and Lindy if they wanted a poodle. And they said, oh yeah, yeah, they were excited. So I came home with two poodles, a pink one and a white one. Mm -hmm. They were clock radios. <laughs> <laughs> But they start with Michael. Michael was the first grandson. Michelle, after Michelle was, uh, um, let me see, I go by the girls. Yeah, Derek and, yeah, and Derek, Amber, and then hmm, Jeremiah. Yeah, Bridget came in after Amber, after. After Amber or before Amber, I don't know. Yeah, and then Cookie, which I call Cookie. Yeah, and, and Eugene. No, you were before Cookie. Yeah, you were before Cookie. You were after Davy, Davy, and yeah, and then Davy and Angelina, and that's when you came in. Not after I was. Uh, uh, let me see, it was Armand, and then after Armand was uh, Ian, then after Ian was Adrian. Yeah, Adrian is the, the last grandchild. That's where, that's where Logan, Ian and Logan come in, and the great grandchildren. And then after that comes um, Lord of this, Lord of this, and Chanel. I'm probably for, gonna forget one. Baby CC. Baby CC is the last one. Matthew and yeah, he's next to Lord of this. Lord of this, Matthew, Gosh. yeah. I had a good life with my my kids. You know they. They're the ones that were the life to me. And my husband, he always, whatever he did, he supported all my kids. Yeah. Supported every one of them. And everything was for them. So that's, we managed what we have, all this house. We managed to get all of this just by his help. You know it. Turmoil. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I enjoy I enjoy him because I've, you know, it's like. All our family used gets to, together. Yeah. I'll miss it if they don't come. I don't know what I'll do, you know, if they don't all come here. Yeah, well, I I, I really don't, if I want to get there and do it myself, that's hard to provide, really. I like to do it myself. I love to supervise. But if that's always has to be when I can't, because when you get older, everything gets harder to do. You know, even even dishes or anything, to lift them up, they're heavy. Anything that you have to do, it gets, you know, you're not as strong as you used to be. So everything gets harder to do as the years go by. And the longer you live, the, unless you, Keep on moving, keep on, you know, trying to just move around, move anywhere. That'll help you. My kids, when I, when I give them their gift or something, uh, you know, they're all, they're all happy. I like to see their faces, you know, but and see them all, all here enjoying themselves and doing what they want. In my house, you can do what you want. <laughs> You want to eat, you want to help yourself, you know, if it's there. Yeah. <laughs> what? He was a very, very nice person, very, very quiet. In the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> 
yeah. Very quiet, very everything, you know. We go to the movies or whatever, very, very nice. The drive-ins. Yeah. With all the kids. <laughs> <laughs> the hot that was, yeah. <laughs> that was, that was much later. <laughs> yeah. When Cece and Lindy used to go to the movies with us, they had drive-ins where you could take the kids so <laughs> they would fall asleep. <laughs> You'd take them in their pajamas. Mm -hmm. so, Ready for bed. <laughs> yeah, and you'd just buy them a hot chocolate. You used to call it hot toddy. <laughs> and mm -hmm. they would fall asleep, and we would see the good movies. Well, I didn't really, really have neighbors or nothing. I never had any problems with no, no neighbors. You know, you know, just the way it is now. I mean, you know, I never, never had problems with neighbors. Or dif difficult, yeah, because sometimes, you know, it was hard to pay the house or something because either he had to go to another job or something, but everything turned well. Yeah, you do. You learn to be more careful with, with your money to take care of it and you know, even even dishes or anything to lift them up, they're heavy. Anything that you have to do, it gets, you know, you're not as strong as you used to be. So everything gets harder to do as the years go by. And the longer you live, the, unless you keep on moving, keep on, you know, trying to just move around, move anywhere. Well, he started getting up at four o'clock in the morning, and he still does. <laughs> I know. Yeah, because he always got up at four to go to work, so his habit is still with him. You know, so that that was the uh, hardest at first. You know, not waking waking me up. I wasn't used to that. <laughs> Well, thank God that uh, mo most of my children are going to college and getting well educated. And that's one thing that I've always strived for. I've tried to give all my children the best education that I could afford. They, in turn, are doing the same thing for their children. And uh, that's it, study, have fun, stay out of trouble, and uh, Love your parents, that's all. That the best thing is for you to go to school or to teach your school your your children about their life and the life of their grandparents, but mostly to teach them to go to school and to go as far as they can, study as much as they can, whatever they like, whatever they like to do. No, don't try and Tell them, oh, you got to learn this or that, because it's better when you, you have a job and you like your job, you'll be happier. That's what I want for my children, to all be happy at what they're doing, you know, because I want them all, all to succeed in whatever they do, because I love them all. I love all my children. I want them to, to be the best they can be.